Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we had a great fun one for you today. We've got a full width parallax section with some animations going on. Here it is coming up from the bottom of the screen. Got a little planet there, call to action. We've got a little spaceship or flying saucer flying across the screen there. And we got the ground sort of scaling in there. And of course, if we go back up, it's going to do the exact opposite. Now, I don't know that my screen recording software may make that look slightly glitchy, but it's a very smooth effect. There's no coding involved in this today at all. It's all done with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down. We'll delete that section and we'll start from scratch. Okay. Well, I'm going to add a new section. Now, as we're using scrolling effects of this today, it's going to work best if you put it in between two other sections that have got a bit of height to them so you can actually scroll up and down the page, see what's going on here. So let's add the new section, little blue button. Going to make it a regular section. Inside that, and I'm initially going to put in a, an image, which is going to be our little UFO. So if we roll down to image, just going to use mine as a regular image right there. We're going to be working with three images today. I've got a little UFO flying saucer type thing with a transparent background there, PNG. I've got a sort of space background picture. And I've got a sort of planet with some rocks. And I've crudely cut out the sort of top bit so it's transparent at the top there. So the first image I'm going to add here is our little UFO. There he is right there. Okay, I'm going to leave that just like that. If you want to, you can add a link down below if you want them to be able to click on this little flying saucer. Obviously put your link in there. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. Great. Well, I'm going to leave that just like that. Then I'm going to add, personally, a little call to action module. You can add whatever combination of modules and things you want for yours. I'm going to use a call to action, so we've got a little button and a title. There's a title. I'm going to leave everything just as it is. Obviously, customize yours to your needs. Button, what well, the button says there. You may have noticed there's no button. We'll fix that in a moment. And down here is the content. Now, going back to the button there, if I roll this up, Button's not going to appear till you put a link in. Still under content, if we roll down a bit more, we've got a link here. As soon as you put a link in there, I'm just going to put a hashtag placeholder. The button's going to show up. Same best practices apply. Great. Well, we got our two little modules there. I'm now going to add a new row under this one. Little green button to add a new row. I'm going to put a single column in it. I'm not going to put any module in it at all. So I'm going to X out of there, but I am going to go into this row. I'm going to give it a background. Again, I'm going to go over to background image. This time, I'm going to add a little planet thing there. So I'll upload that, and we've got there. Alignment-wise, cover's fine, but background image position... I actually want it to start at the top left-hand corner so that we see the rocks at all times. So we're always going to see the top of those rocks there. And you can adjust the size of the amount you see by going over to Design. Go down to Spacing. And if we go down and give it padding top and bottom, let's give it 100 picks. Just put in 100. It'll put the PX for you. You can decide what size you want it. Let's hit the little chain here. And it'll give it that much on the bottom as well. That way we've got a, a definite amount that we can see there. Great. Well, we've kind of got our elements in place there. Let's put our sort of space background in position. We'll save this. We're going to go into the section for this because we want this to cover everything that's in here, all the rows and modules. Blue tab for a section. Again, under content, I'm going to go straight down to background. I'm going to go over background image. I'm going to add my little space background picture now. Now, any images that you use for 
large backgrounds like this, I would suggest at least 19, 20 pics wide. Uh, bigger if you can, and always try and make your file sizes as small as you can. So let's upload this image. And there it is. As you can see, it's behind all of our bits and pieces there. Great. But just to make it start moving, I want to make that parallax so that it moves at a different rate from the front of the site. And I'll demonstrate that if we look down below the image right there. Click the little switch till it says yes. There's two types. There's true parallax. If I scroll up and down now, you'll notice that that is moving at a different rate than the front of the site there. And that's a lovely effect. We've also got what they call CSS parallax. I'd call that fixed background. Whereas now if we scroll, that background image stays exactly where it is. And I like them both. I think this one's pretty dramatic. So I'm going to work with this one today, but choose whichever one you want. Okay. Well, let's start making this work now. Now our planet looks like it's sort of floating in the middle of our space here. I want it to be on the bottom. I want it to stretch at least as wide as the screen. So the first thing that I really need to do is get rid of any padding at the bottom still in our section. We're still in the blue tab, the section. So let's go over to our design and go down the spacing there. Here we've got padding again in the bottom. I'm going to put a zero. That way our planet's sitting on the bottom of our little section there. Just what I want. But of course we're going to have to stretch it out and I'll do that in a moment. Let's just have a look at the top. I'm actually going to absolute position this in a minute so it'll sort of disappear from where it is. So I'm going to give my section a bit of breathing room at the top so it's got a bit of height. So still on the spacing here, padding top, I'm going to add a couple of hundred pixels to mine. Obviously adjust yours to whatever your needs are. Great. Well, I'm happy with my little section there. Let's go in and make this full width to do that. Go into the green tab for the row there. Over to design, sizing. You'll find width there. Slide it up to 100%. Copy that 100%, control C, or you can just type this in below if you want to. I'm going to paste it. Paste, control V. And we've got a full width section there and our little rocks there are sitting right on the bottom of our section. And they're moving up and down with the site, which is great. But we'll animate those a bit more in a minute. Well, this is starting to come together now. Let's save this. My little module here, all I'm going to do to that is take that blue background away. So I'm going to go into my little module. As default call to actions come with a little background there. Background's always under content. If we roll down, there's the background. Roll over the field, little trash can there. You can change it or get rid of it. I'm happy to get rid of it. Okay. Well, animation wise, I guess we'll start off with our little UFO at the top there. Or well, not so little, it's pretty big in that picture now. So let's save our changes. And we're going to go into this little image module, not the row this time. We're going to go into the actual module itself. Little dark tab for the module. Going to go inside there. I'm going to go over to advanced. Once in advanced, let's go down to position. I'm going to change it from the default to absolute. It means we can place it absolutely within its parent element. And with a little grid, you can place it wherever you want over here. I'm going to pop mine in the middle. As it's an image, I'm going to just pop to design and make sure it's aligned in the middle also. There we go. So we've got it right in the middle now, which is fantastic. If we go back to position there. And demonstrate that better now it's aligned by doing that. Okay. Well, let's just roll down a little bit. We've got scroll effects down there. And this is where we can make some really great stuff happen when they scroll up and down the page. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up to this. And we've got several little tabs. We've got vertical motion, horizontal, fading in and out, scaling up and down, which means making bigger or smaller, rotating or blurring. So the first thing I'm going to do with this little thing is do some horizontal motion. So I'm going to click on the horizontal motion tab. I'm going to hit the little switch to turn it on. And you may have noticed it's moved right away, just over to our right there, because we've got a, a four over here and a negative four at the top. What this represents here is a viewport bottom, bottom of our screen here, and viewport top, top of your screen. And this is halfway up. You can set different values. 
So rather than four, I'm going to start it off at zero. If I roll it down to the bottom of the screen there, you can see it starts off right there. When we roll up and get to about 50%, I'm going to have it go negative five. And you can either increment up and down with a little arrows like that, or you just type in the negative symbol and however much you want it to go up by. So now, at the bottom of the screen, it's down there. It's going to start to roll across the screen as we scroll up. Now you can play with this, do exactly what you want. You don't have to copy what I'm doing at all. I'm just trying to demonstrate this. Now, when we get to the top of the screen at the moment, it's fairly static. I want it to actually come across the screen a little bit more than that. So I've got negative four up there. I'm going to change that to, we'll try negative 15, maybe. I think that's what I used before. That's the only reason I'm saying 15. Just experiment with it. Now when we scroll up the screen, let's start from the bottom again. It's going to come in from the left, and it's going to start going more across the screen over there, which is more what I wanted. I think I could give it a couple more. I think 20 might be too much. I kind of want it to disappear off the screen at the end there. And let's roll it back. So it's starting over somewhere over there. And if you wanted it to go straight across, just make that a bit more there. Great. Well, that's okay. But I'd like to sort of have it fade in and be small over there. So let's scale it first. We'll make it small. So it's fading in. Looks like it's getting closer, perhaps. Now we've got scale over here, scaling up and then. So let's click on that one. Let's enable it. I really want it to start off as small as it can go, which I guess would be 0%. So I'm going to put a zero in there and see what happens. If I scroll it down to the bottom, it'll get smaller. That's okay. I'm going to have it start off real small. So it's starting to scale in there. That's kind of nice. And then move across if you leave it like that, because it it's staying at 100% when we get halfway up the screen. I'm going to change that to about 30%, I think. Just put in a 30. It'll put in percentage for you. That's more like it. Now we've got a nice little spaceship there. It's sort of getting smaller, getting bigger as it rolls in. As it comes across the screen, it's still getting larger. And it's going to disappear off to the side there. Great. But when it's really small like that, and let's get back down there, when it's really small like that in the background, I want to kind of fade it out a little bit so it comes into view. So you guessed it, we can do that with fading in and out. So if I click on that, we'll enable it. And as you can see, it's already faded out. We've got it set to 0% at the bottom there. 100%, I want to bring it in a bit quicker than that because if we fade out there, it's still going to look a bit faded. Now, that's too much background there. So I'm actually going to slide our little slider here down a bit, maybe to 20%, something like that. So I'll, I have it fully in, something like that. That's better. It's fully in now. It sort of fades in from there, which is just what I want. And again, obviously adjust it to your needs. You can get some fantastic effects going, as you can see. Well, great. That's looking great. Let's just save that. We'll roll down a little bit. Now, the other thing, we've got our little planet here. What I'd like to do is make that a lot bigger. And as we roll up the page, I'll have it shrink back into the size that it is now. Now, this is very easy to do. But what you've got to remember is this rows inside our section. If I make it bigger, it's going to spill outside of our section. So the first thing we need to do is hide any overflow from the section because Google doesn't like it if you have overflowing elements that are bigger than your page. So go into the blue tab, the section where we've got that nice space background. We'll go over to advanced, down to visibility. There you find horizontal and vertical overflow. Change both of these to hidden. Once you've done that, we're good to go. So we can go back in here. Now let's make this row a lot bigger and then we can use the scroll effect to bring it in a bit to give it an extra sort of parallax type effect. So we'll go into that row. We've got the little image in of the rocks and things. Again, I'm going to go over to advanced scroll effects. This time I'm just going to use scale on this. 
I'm going to click on scale. Hit the little button to enable it. When it starts off, I want it huge. So well, I think 150. Let's try 140. I think that's what I had. Again, just put in the numbers. It'll put in the percent for you. If we scroll down to the bottom, as you can see, that's growing a lot bigger now. As we scroll back up the page and the flying saucer comes across, it's getting smaller, which is great. Now, I can't scale it down any less than 100% purely because you'll see just the sharp corners of the image come in there, and I don't want to see that. So 100% is as low as I can go with that. But what I can do is slide this all the way up to 100%. So it fades in, or scales in, I should say, nice and slowly. And never gets past that 100 or below 100%, so you don't see any corners there. And there we have it. That's exactly what I did on the last one. Obviously, play with it, you can get some phenomenal effects. Let's just save our changes here. Go down to the little purple button. We'll click on it. And incidentally, this will work fine on tablet and mobile also, if I click to tablet mode may have to adjust the position of your spaceship on some of this. But the parallaxes will work fine if I scroll up and down there. we got our little spaceship going across there. Like I say, you can adjust those values on tablet and mobile if you want to. I'll show you how to do that in one second. And let's have a look at mobile. And again, that works fine. And our little parallax is working there. Can't see the spaceship. But like I say, you can adjust that for tablet and mobile. I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you how to do it. If we go into our little module here, as I've got fixed positioning on this module now, or absolute positioning, you may have trouble getting to it. I can get to mine, but if you have trouble, once you've got your little purple button open, go over to wireframe mode, little icon left-hand side, click on it. It'll take you to back end mode. We can roll down to our section. There's our image. There's our call to action. You can get in that way. Once you're in there, go back to desktop view. Roll on down. And as I was saying, if you want to adjust where the spaceship is for your mobile views and any of these settings, actually, you can very easily do it. If we go over to our advanced here, go back down to your scroll effects. And each of these scroll effects, the horizontal motion, if you roll over the dark writing, this is common to all Divi modules, you'll see some little icons pop up. Scroll over the horizontal motion, or whichever one you're doing. There's a little phone icon there. You can have completely different settings for tablet and mobile. So you can bring that little spaceship in wherever you want on those devices also. Like I say, I'm not going to do anything with that today. But we should be good to go now. Let's save our changes. Hit the little purple button. We'll save our draft or publish if you're ready. Exit the visual builder. And let's roll down to where we were working. There it is starting to come in there. There's a the little planet. There's a little spaceship going across. And our little rocks and planet base is sort of scaling in there. Scaling out where we go down the bottom. And that's a great little effect to have on your website. You do this sort of thing, it's going to get people's attention really quickly. And like I say, no coding involved whatsoever. We're just using the effects there. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.